What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week there's a new study out that suggests maybe vegan diets are better than omnivorous diets. But first, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for the algorithm. Now, this video is definitely not gonna have a lot of angry comments from carnivores and vegans. That would never happen on any one of my videos. So all this comes up because a new study was published out of Chris Gardner's lab looking at vegan diets versus omnivorous diets and their effects on some health markers. There's nothing super unique about it because it's an eight week randomized control trial looking at a vegan diet versus omnivorous diet. And their primary outcome was looking at LDL cholesterol in healthy people, middle-aged healthy people. But what is unique about it was the participants were 22 sets of twins. These are hard studies to recruit for, for obvious reasons, because you've got to get sets of twins, both of whom agree to eat, not just the diet that they're asking for, but they had to be okay with eating either a vegan or omnivorous diet. So they can't get people who are ethical vegans to do this. They wouldn't want to be possibly randomized to the omnivorous group, and it's hard to get people to agree to this sort of thing. And you've got to get not just them to agree, but their twin to agree. So having 22 sets of twins is unique in that aspect. And also because you are re drastically reducing the amount of genetic variability, especially when it comes to things like LDL cholesterol. They also looked at things like body weight, insulin, TMAO. And so they're looking at how these different diets affect those health markers. How do they actually test this? These weren't meant to be weight loss diets. They were just meant to be kind of like maintenance diets. And they had these sets of twins randomized to either vegan diets or omnivorous diets. And the first four weeks, the foods were all prepared and provided by Trifecta. Shout out to them for actually helping out with this study. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them, received no money from them, received no meals from them. Trifecta, are you listening? But they did provide the meals for these participants which is nice because that means the first four weeks at least, um, you're likely to have very high levels of adherence and that's what they did see. In the last four weeks, they had quite a bit of counseling with uh, dietitians to help them learn how to make meals that would fit the different diets that they're doing. And to reduce the risk of bias, they gave similar instructions about diets for both groups. They advised them to stick to minimally processed foods, limit added sugars. So it wasn't like they were just telling one group hey, eat healthy, and the other group's like, have whatever you want. That's, that's not what they're doing. Both groups were eating a, a relatively healthy diet. So what did they see at the end of eight weeks? Well, interestingly, the omnivorous group didn't really have any change in their health biomarkers. Uh, none of them got worse and none of them got better, really. But the vegan group did see some improvement in their biomarkers. They saw a reduction in LDL cholesterol by about 14 milligrams per deciliter or 13.9 milligrams per deciliter, I think it was. They also saw a reduction in fasting insulin and they saw a reduction in body weight by about a kilo and a half. Interestingly, HDL actually dropped a little bit in the vegan group. Not super worried about that. HDL doesn't appear to be regulatory in terms of heart disease, whereas LDL does appear to be regulatory. HDL is thought of as the good cholesterol, but really it's more of just a biomarker of overall metabolic health. We have the diet wars coming out and now the vegans the plant-based folks have their football to spike and say, look, see, vegan is better. I read through this study and I am not surprised at all at the results they found. So first of all, the vegan group, they were on average consuming about 200 less calories per day. And if you look at the amount of weight they lost, whereas the omnivorous group didn't lose weight, it's about, equates to about a 200 calorie a day deficit. So it's not surprising they lost weight. Now they didn't instruct them to eat a deficit, but they just ended up eating in a slight calorie deficit, probably because they were more satiated, which, hey, I mean, that's possibly a benefit because they're not prescribing them a certain number of calories. They're, they just told them, hey, eat until you feel satisfied. They saw a slight reduction in body weight, but the reduction in body weight is not enough to explain the reduction that they saw in LDL cholesterol or the reduction in insulin. They also saw a reduction in TMAO, which TMAO may be a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. They're unsure at this point if TMAO is a risk factor or simply a associative biomarker. The, the difference is, for example, LDL is associated with heart disease, but it is also a risk factor for heart disease, meaning changing levels of cholesterol can modify your risk of heart disease. But something that's just an indicator means that it's associated with whatever it is, like heart disease, 
but modifying those levels doesn't necessarily modify your risk of heart disease, meaning one is a byproduct of the disease outcome, the other is a causative factor. So they're not sure if TMAO is a causative factor, but they did see a slight reduction in the vegan group compared to the omnivorous group. The reduction in body weight can in part explain some of these differences, but it, it's certainly not a big enough reduction in body weight. It was like two and a half percent of their body weight. That's not enough to explain the difference in LDL cholesterol or insulin or TMAO. However, when we look at the diets themselves, it is very clear as to why they saw these differences. Because I think a lot of people would interpret this study as see there's some inherent component of meat that makes it more likely to give you heart disease. And that's not the case. So if we look at the saturated fat intakes of the vegan group versus the omnivorous group, in the first four weeks, the vegan group was consuming 25% less saturated fat per day and also was consuming about 15 to 20% more polyunsaturated fats. Both of those things will modify LDL cholesterol. Replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat will reduce LDL cholesterol independently of any other variable. So you have two things going in the direction of the vegan diet, which is the reduced saturated fat and increased polyunsaturated fat. Now in the last four weeks, that difference actually became much more drastic. The omnivore group consumed almost double the saturated fat of the vegan group. Now the polyunsaturated fat was a little bit closer in uh, the last four weeks, but still saturated fat is the big modifier for LDL. So again, based on these saturated fat intakes, it's not surprising they saw differences in LDL. And also another big dietary modifier of LDL cholesterol is dietary fiber. So I wonder if there are differences in dietary fiber. Oh man, I hate it when I'm right. Actually, my video guy, Brian, when he came in, as he walked in the front door, he heard me cackling in the background because I was reading this study thinking, I bet there were significant differences in fiber intake and oh, wouldn't you know it, there was. So in the vegan group, they were consuming about a third more fiber per day. Now fiber has been shown to reduce LDL cholesterol, but not just that, it's also been shown to improve insulin sensitivity, very easily explaining the differences in LDL cholesterol. And saturated fat has also been shown to raise TMAO and dietary fiber has been shown to lower TMAO. What is my take home from this study? I think it's actually a really great study because using twins, like I said, minimizes genetic variability. But unfortunately, what happens is these studies get overinterpreted. It isn't that the vegan diet is somehow magical or that meat has some inherent component to it that causes an increase in these risk factors. It's the fact that these folks were in an energy deficit, a slight energy deficit. They were consuming less saturated fat, more polyunsaturated fat, and they were consuming more fiber. You can still do that on an omnivorous diet. So if you choose to consume meat, the take home is consume lean sources of meat, low in saturated fat, make sure that you get enough fiber in per day, and make sure that you're prioritizing polyunsaturated fat over saturated fat. But this study is not proof that vegan diets are inherently better than omnivorous diets. What it does support is the idea that in a free living study where people are not tracking their nutrient intakes and not paying as much attention to them, that it's probably easier to get more fiber and easier to get less saturated fat on a plant-based diet. So if you're an omnivore or you're choosing to consume meat products, you probably need to be a little bit better or a little bit more diligent with the animal products you consume and again, consuming less saturated fat, more polyunsaturated fats, and more fiber. You guys know I'm a big fan of fiber. Whether you're vegan, omnivore, low carb, high carb, intermittent fasting, our app Carbon Diet Coach makes it so you can do whatever dietary preference you like. We do not force you into a particular dietary preference because we know what really makes the difference on all this stuff is just making sure you're consuming the right amount of calories for your goal and your energy expenditure, getting enough total protein in, enough fiber, 
and then limiting your saturated fat. So we give you the option from low carb, low fat, ketogenic, plant-based, balanced. The world is your oyster with Carbon Diet Coach. If you follow the coaching prompts and you consistently check in with the coaching portion of the app and log your weight and log your food, you will get results. It's hard to get nutrition coaching anywhere for $9.99 a month. I'm not aware of anywhere you can get it for $9.99 a month other than Carbon Diet Coach. We're available on iOS and Android. Make sure you click the link in the description and sign up and I'll catch you guys next week. Subscribe. Make sure you click the link in the description. Make sure you click the link in the What the f is going on? Make sure you click the link in the subscription. Me. All right, Brian, you gotta do this in the outtakes.